All right, in this last video of our in our series on Git and GitHub, uh, we're going to just basically talk about some features that GitHub has to offer. And so uh, we're going to talk about GitHub Pages, which is a free hosting service for static HTML pages. Uh, we talk about GitHub Actions, which is a new functionality that was added last year. And then we're going to talk about a few things in uh, the settings uh, of a repository. And so, and then also there's a, a recent um, addition or a new feature that GitHub released, which is called Git Pod, uh, which allows us to edit our code within the browser. And so I just want to walk to, through each of those uh, those features that GitHub offers, and uh, that'll conclude this video. All right, so let's start off by talking about GitHub Pages, and then we'll discuss what actions are, uh, and then we'll focus on Git Pod. And so here I have a repository uh, that I created as for a site that I'm going to use for uh, our new cloud computing class uh, that we'll be offering uh, in the spring. Uh, but this repository only has one readme file in it. It doesn't have any code within it. Um, but if I were to create an HTML file, let me just go ahead and create a temporary HTML file here. And you'll see, uh, let's do that here, create new file. And this is going to be just a basic index.html file. I'll just do a basic HTML structure. HTML. And then we have our two child root nodes, which is going to be head and body. I'll give this a title and say meal slot temp page or splash page. And then the body here, I'll do the same here. Say, just give it an H1, mill slot coming soon. Like I said, just have a basic HTML page here. Uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make a commit. So I'll just say initial commit for adding index.html splash page. And I'll just commit this file or commit to the repository. So now I have an index.html file. And like I said, this whole uh, feature here is um, called GitHub Pages, uh, which is a free hosting service. So if you go here and say GitHub Pages, uh, and essentially you can host your site for free. Uh, and there's a lot of other cool things you can do where you can actually uh, use Angular or React uh, and host your, your application. But in this case here, um, it's free hosting uh, to anybody who wants to have a live website. You can also add a domain name uh, to uh, your repository uh, and so people can access your site via the domain name. So how would I add or how would I host this site on host uh, this repository or this index.html file uh, using GitHub pages? So if I go to the settings tab here, uh, if I scroll all the way down, uh, you'll see a, a section here called GitHub pages. And I can choose the branch that I want to host uh, my application on. In this case here, I'll host it on master. Uh, it'll be the root. And I'll just press save. <clears throat> and what it's going to do is give me a, um, a subdomain name uh, that where I can go and access this application. So if I copy this, open a new tab, you'll see here's <clears throat> uh, the page. But then here, if I go to index, at HTML, right? There's my temporary page that I just created. Uh, anybody can access this this page uh, from anywhere on the internet, uh, the World Wide Web. And so, uh, if you want to try it now, feel free to do that. But this page is being hosted uh, on GitHub servers, and it's free. Uh, it doesn't cost me anything, uh, and you can host as many different uh, repositories that have static HTML pages as many as you want. Um, so it's a free service that. Uh, allows you to <clears throat> host your HTML documents. So that's GitHub Pages, um, which is a, a pretty cool service, uh, a really um, friendly service that GitHub offers. The next one here is GitHub Actions, uh, which has to do a lot with automation. Sometimes you can also do what we call continuous CI's, continuous uh, integration, continuous delivery, um, which is a function feature that's offered within GitHub. And so if you go, <clears throat> there's a tab here called actions and 
uh, if you wanted to automate the process from your local machine to the cloud, you can uh, choose one of these services. Uh, what it's going to do is build out a workflow for you. <clears throat> and they've already built um, a number of workflows for you on your, on your behalf. And you just have to select the one that uh, would best suit your, your application uh, for your repository. Uh, so there's a Docker image, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, I have a whole video series. On, I'm going to have a whole video series on Docker. Um, this is .NET Core. Um, but here, uh, if we're doing a Node.js application, we can set up a workflow uh, that will deploy our application uh, to a server uh, that, uh, uh, that Microsoft uh, hosts somewhere or houses somewhere in the world. And same thing with AWS. If we want to deploy application uh, to a server or to a container, uh, we can do that with this particular workflow. You can also build your own workflows. You don't necessarily have to go with these uh, prescribed templates. Uh, you can just uh, go ahead and create your own workflow. But that does require some knowledge of uh, how to create an action or a workflow within GitHub Actions. So that's GitHub Actions, and it's a pretty cool thing. You don't have to. You can, um, like I said, the big thing here is automation. Uh, so you can trigger a number of different things to happen. Uh, with your application based on when you push up some changes to your repository um, and it could trigger an action. The next thing here, uh, well, repo settings, there's a lot here. I'm not going to say much about it here, but let me just go to the settings tab and <clears throat> uh, you'll see that here you have the opportunity to uh, upload a, a kind of a banner um, that you can use uh, for this template. You can change the name uh, you can actually have people sponsor your repository especially if it's in a repository uh, where it's for the common good or that other people are benefiting from uh, you can display a sponsor button and people can uh, contribute finan financially uh, to your project and you can uh, accept donations uh, which is another pretty cool uh, sweet setting that github offers there's some things that you can do in terms of merge because merging isn't we haven't talked a lot about merging um, but you want to uh, kind of control what can be merged and who can merge uh, and what branches should be emerged and so there's a section here where you can read more about that and begin to um, set the settings for uh, the merge functionality for your repository and we already talked about github pages um, and then here's a section here where you can actually begin to uh, delete the repository. You can change ownership so you can transfer uh, who owns the repository. And then you can set it to private or public. Um, <clears throat> if it's some code that you don't necessarily want to be open source or have, have other people have access to, you most likely want to set that to private. Uh, one more thing here. Um, when you're working with a team, uh, there's uh, this, 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 brand, uh, this section over here where you can add people uh, to your your repository um, and I think it's under manage access I just have to put my password in here real quick All right and so if you're working with a team uh, this is where if you do want to set up a branching strategy uh, you can invite uh, different folks who already have a github account and so you would just click on this invite collaborator uh, and begin to add people uh, to this repository and when you add them uh, they'll have full read write access to that repository um, and so uh, when you are doing the branching strategy this is one of the areas where you want to make sure that you set up your you set up your team and so if you have a team of three make sure they all have a github account and uh, then add them if you're the team lead add them to this repository last but not least i want to say a few words this is a very very new feature uh, that GitHub offers uh, is just fresh off the press. I think as as of this summer, it's called GitPod, um, and you'll see that GitPod looks very uh, similar to um, very similar to Visual Studio Code. And so, <clears throat> one second here, make sure my okay, yep, still recording. So, GitPod looks very similar to Visual Studio Code, and so if I click on this GitPod. Uh, it's gonna it's a, it's a web-based IDE um, and it's going to open up the code uh, that's in the repository and we can edit the code right here within the browser um, and the cool thing about it was this one click um, I don't necessarily have to download the application open it up in uh, my own locally hosted IDE or editor I can just go to Gitpod and begin to edit my application 
And so here's my index.html file uh, that I created. Um, and I can add some more code and I can go in and commit that information uh, and it would go directly to my GitHub account. Uh, it will push up that code as, if I, once I run the command to push it up. And so a really cool feature uh, that was recently added by GitHub. Um, and as a team, you may want to consider uh, using this as your focal point of editing and working with code. Um, there's some other cloud-based IDEs. There's code everywhere. Um, there's another tool called Cloud9, which I use a lot. Um, but here, Gitpod seems to be um, a very trusted uh, cloud-based, not cloud-based, but a web-based editor uh, that is going to gain some traction here in the future. Again, I uh, just wanted to talk about GitHub and some of the features, um, and then obviously some of the settings that you can uh, tamper with within, uh, within your repo, uh, within your repository. Um, feel free to play around with all these different features. Uh, I would say explore, explore, explore. Um, there's more uh, than what I mentioned in this video, uh, but nonetheless, GitHub is doing a, an amazing job with helping us as developers make our lives a little bit easier by adding a lot of these features uh, to the various repositories that we own. So that concludes the series on Git and GitHub. Um, like I said, uh, there's a lot more uh, that could be learned here, um, but uh, I would say most of the industry professionals probably only use about 25% uh, of the commands and the functionality of Git, but just know that uh, there's a lot more uh, that, can, that you can do with Git. Uh, and, and more specifically, uh, if you're doing a cloud repository, you can do with much more you can do with GitHub. All right, so that concludes the series. And um, feel free to contact me uh, if you have any questions.